Welcome to Pit Pass Live, presented by Honda. I am Indy Star Motorsports Insider Jim Aiello, and I am joined by the fastest driver of the day, U.S. Air Force and Andretti Autosport driver Connor Daly. Connor, you were uh, pretty quick out there today. Thank you. Yeah, yeah it was. Uh, no question there. I'm just telling you. It was a nice you. day. Yeah, it was. It was a very lovely day. Um, nice and super hot. Uh, we got a lot of running in uh, in the hot conditions, which is important, obviously. Um, but yeah, man, just felt really nice to get that lap in, um, just to get all these laps in today, because we were going fast most of the day, which is really nice. We heard you talk about it just in the press conference before. You're saying the it was interesting. The manufacturer battles a little closer, maybe than you were than you guys were thinking before. Realistically, I don't think tomorrow it'll be that close. I think okay. it'll be it'll be pretty one sided. But okay. um, but our guys are working hard and, and 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 they're putting in the effort. Honda is doing a great job. Uh, my guy Dustin on my stand is is doing awesome. I love working with him. Um, and I'm just pumped to be a part of it. I mean, last last year I I was I was struggling and and I was definitely on. Um, I got on Honda's case a lot and 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 they, I know they were trying and and I, I'm certainly thankful to have them this year um, working. You know, working hard, and and we'll just you know, no matter what, we're just going to give it our best shot tomorrow and see right. what happens. Well, let's do power of positive thinking. Like uh, Fernando there, he was saying that uh, the benefit of not running yesterday was got all these nice fresh tires. So uh, yeah, yeah, which is very fun. But no, you are out there. Obviously, put together a quick lap. Might not be as quick as some of the uh, as the Chevys, but how yeah. are you feeling about your uh, your chances tomorrow? You drew number one, by the way. We have like breaking news yeah. essentially. Uh, you drew, you're going out there first. So how are you feeling about your chances tomorrow? Ah, I mean, we'll see, man. I mean. Going first is kind of cool. I've never gone first before. Don't know really what that means. I hope the track's nice and cool. I hope the sun is very far away. Um, because certainly temperature has been a huge um, point of, of interest for everyone this this uh, this week. So we'll see what happens. Um, I hope that we can just go out there and put a, a banger of a run in and um, and just see what happens. But, boy, it's going to be hard to watch the rest of the day for sure. Yeah, you're going first, and you just got to sit there and watch the whole rest of the time. Maybe you'll get back uh, yeah. out there. You never know. Yeah, well, I don't know. I we'll see. We'll see. All right, I wanted to talk about other news of the day really quickly. Was uh, Hunkos Racing? Kyle took a Kyle, you know those guys. Yeah. Kyle Kaiser took a pretty bad crash. They've been working really hard. They called in their uh, Indy Pro 2000 team. Yeah. Twenty five guys working on that car. They're working really hard to get it ready for tomorrow. You know what? They've been so fast too. Kyle has been doing a great job. The team is doing a great job. I mean, those guys are like family to me. Um, I really hope they pull through, and I think that. If they do get it going again, I think Tom Brown and, my, and Mike Reggio over there, I think those guys will get it going um, because I, I, I think they've got a strong package, and uh, I, I hope Kyle makes it for sure. All right. Well, coming up after the break, we're going to hear from this guy a little bit more, I think, Fernando Alonso, Jill DeFerrin from McLaren. A lot going on at, Indi at the Indianapolis 500. Qualifying tomorrow should be exciting. Thanks for joining us, Connor. Thank you. I just I love it here, and 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 I've always worked so hard to try and have the best chance that we've that we've had with what we what with what I've been driving, and um, definitely have have made mistakes here. Definitely have um, had a lot of bad luck here, um, but uh, but I still love it. I love driving every lap, and and this week has gone a lot better I think than we've shown on the timesheets, and so today. Um, was definitely uh, a reward for the guys, really. I think they've, they've worked so hard. I mean, I've done more laps in these last few days than I think I've ever done um, on practice days, uh, just, just getting ready. And, I mean, that helps. Every lap here helps. And um, we're going to keep at it. I mean, tomorrow we obviously – it depends on where we draw. It depends on where we go. Temperature is literally controlling, you know, almost half to a mile an hour worth of speed. Um, you know, depending on when you go out. So, uh, so I'll be really curious to see where we draw. But, I mean, either way, we're just you know super happy. Yeah, it was a it was a positive day for us, and uh, we were able to uh, to put the car on track and uh, yeah, and try different different directions on, on the setup and learn a little bit about the the track and the day. Uh, obviously, the boost was up today, so the speeds were higher, and uh, it was more a, a quality preparation than than race uh, setups. But, uh, yeah, we had uh, uh, a lot of new tires from the last couple of days, so we were able to, to do a lot of uh, runs, and, uh, yeah, hopefully that information will give us tomorrow uh, a little bit of um, uh, confidence into qualifying. 
Coming up after the break, you're going to hear even more from Connor Daly. We spoke to the Indianapolis 500 one-offs about what they think about the idea of guaranteed entries for the Indianapolis 500. Quick preview, they're not fans. I think I think the what what makes this place special is the fact that you no matter where you are from top to bottom on the list you've got to lay it on the line and that I think the the idea of uh, creating guaranteed entries just takes away that I mean I'm, and it's not even to say anything about being full time or part time or or whatever um, you know obviously we're out here we got to qualify for the race one way or the other I've been on the other side of it you know that you would have been you know, locked in. But I mean, I can say just from the perspective of like the years that there's no bumping, we've had a few of those in my career that for sure the drama of qualifying and just the, the sort of risk, the awareness of risk that everybody has goes way down. And to me, that's, you know, at the same time that that I hear uh, that I hear the argument by team owners being made that you know if they're full time teams they're sort of the ones that you want to be able to have a part of this thing every year. Even those guys are basing huge chunks of their sponsorship around being able to come here to the Indy 500 and the TV rating that this place gets and the you know magnitude and the gravity that this place still still holds to sponsors to fans to to everybody and so i think that it's it's just to me it's like kind of a connected system of parts that it's like if you start to decrease the drama you start to decrease the intensity of what it's what is required to come here and do well you start to kind of devalue the whole thing and that to me is like a a bad cycle to get in like that's that's working towards indy just being the same as any other race on the schedule yeah. you know in a sort of extreme view of it so i guess from from that more like pulled i think as one-off entries you do have a chance to pull back and like really look at all of this stuff you're not in the thick of it every weekend um you know we gotta we gotta keep the keep the things that make this place special um you know rolling along well obviously i i i don't like it i mean you know history is history i think it's all i think it's all very exciting i think one of the reasons everyone is so pumped up about qualifying this weekend is because there is 36 cars i mean that's that's one of the most exciting things that everyone keeps talking to me about is like hey this is going to be wild like this is going to be really cool this could be you know this could be a wild weekend i'm like yeah i think i think it will be um and it just means everyone has to be on their game it doesn't matter you know because if if there were guaranteed spots for qualifying there'd be some teams who wouldn't even care they just drive around for four laps and, and and oh yeah we're focusing on the race it's like well, no, you gotta you gotta qualify. You know what I mean? So, it's it's it, it just would throw off the entire weekend, the entire week, really. Because then, if people weren't worried about qualifying, all you'd see is a bunch of just race running all the time instead of a bunch of people that you know sometimes need to run by themselves. So, it would throw off everything, and I just don't think it's right. I understand the business reasons why, but work harder at your business to then you know be okay if something if you don't make the race. Obviously. Uh... I think people would say I'm biased to what I'm going to say just because I'm not a full-time entry. Um, but I think even if I was, you know, the voice would be the same. And it's just it's tradition, it's history, you know, you don't screw with it. Um, and, like, seeing online, like, the fans don't want it. And the owners that are pushing for it were against it, you know, a few years back. So, um, you know, that's, that's just how it goes. But... Um, I think the fastest 33 deserved to drive, and I think if you asked Hinch that last year, he would have said the same thing, and that's why, you know, he said, you know, I think you saw back in when people wouldn't make the race, like, people would, that driver and that team would go buy somebody else's car that was in, and Hinch didn't want to do that, because, you know, Hinch is a good guy and, and knows that he didn't make it, he, he, uh, he got to earn it, and whether he screwed up, the team screwed up, somebody screwed up, and um, that's just how it is, and, and, and that's the beauty of Indy, you just never, never, you just never know, you know, it's like, this place is in waves, it's just up one day, down the next, up one day, down the next, and I think the biggest, like, wave story is James Hinchcliffe, I mean, yes. you know, from practically losing his life in a crash to going pole and then to getting bumped, I mean, it's just, that, that guy's been through it all here, so, um, 
yeah, I think the 33 fastest deserved a race, and uh, that's how it should be. Welcome back to Pit Pass Live presented by Honda. We're done for the day now, but we're back tomorrow for qualifying. If you don't know how the new qualifying format works, I would strongly advise you go to IndyStar.com. We put together a nifty little video that explains how the new format will unfold tomorrow very quickly. We're, we're establishing 10 through 30, Fast 9, and the cars, the, final, the last row shootout will take place on Sunday. But again, go watch that video. Very, very helpful, very informative. And then come back and join us for Pit Pass Live again tomorrow. Thanks for joining us.